Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the book of Philippians. I say it's a book, it's, it's a letter really. It was a letter written by the Apostle Paul to encourage and, and build up a church. And this is what he, Paul says to that church and, and this church as well. He says, even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may obtain, attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or have already reached that goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Pray with me. Jesus, in opening Scripture, again and again and again, it says press on, strain forward, to press on. We need your strength to do that. And give us those ears that, that hear and and bodies that are able to, to respond. Thank you for this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Charles Allen, in one of his books, tells a story about two fellows who bumped into each other on the sidewalk. They hadn't seen each other in years and years and years. Didn't even realize they were living in the same city. Well, their conversation, catching up, quickly moved from the sidewalk into the coffee shop. That's when one of the fellows looked down at his watch and realized he had missed his train home from work. He said, I'm sorry, I've got to go. I've already missed my train. And then they discovered they both worked close by. They said, why don't we meet for lunch tomorrow? And we can finish catching up. And so the next day they met for lunch and one of the fellows said, well, how did your wife handle you being late home from work yesterday? He said, well, you know, all I could do was apologize. I, I told her that I'd seen you and we hadn't seen each other in a long time. She knew that. And, and I told her that I'd lost track of time and I just said, I'm sorry. And then he said, well, how'd your wife handle it? She said, well, she got historical. He said, you mean hysterical? He said, no, I mean historical. She brought up things I did 20 years ago. 
(laughs) Well, we all have a tendency to get historical, to remember things that happened a long time in the past and bring them up and, well, to use them in the present and to mess up the future, to get historical. Well, that's what Paul's dealing with right here. There are some folks that Paul couldn't be there in Philippi. And there were folks there in the church that were wanting to bring up their their trophy case, their resume, their their achievements from the past and say that's why they should be leading things going on in the church. That's why they should be the leaders and that's why others should listen to them because they were such sterling people. And they were getting historical Paul says, well, if anybody has reason to get historical, if anybody has a reason to look into their trophy case, their resume, and and their achievements, I do. I fare far more than all those others. And he goes on to say, I can trace my family background before Moses. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin, and Benjamin was only one of two tribes that supported King David when the other ten tribes turned their back. On David. He goes on to say that, that, that um, as far as the sect of that tribe of Benjamin, he says, I'm the sect of the Pharisees. We didn't just, we don't just obey the Ten Commandments. We follow all 613 of the commandments that were based off of those Ten Commandments. And he says, I didn't just follow them a little bit and score a passing grade. He says, blameless. In other words, he scored a 100 on every test. And he says, compared to knowing Christ, I count all that. The trophy case, the resume, the achievements, I I count all of that. Compared to knowing Christ, I count it as rubbish. Now, If you were following along in your Bible while I was reading, some of your Bibles might not have said rubbish, might have said refuse or garbage. And the reason that there's a little discrepancy in the translation there, because Paul uses a very coarse word for sewage. He says, I count it as as sewage, not just stuff you want to drop in the trash can, stuff you want to run from. Stuff that you, want to, that you want to keep as far from you as can. Compared to knowing Christ, all those good things that I named off, I, I want to run from them as far away as I can. Separate myself from them. Compared to knowing Jesus Christ. So he says, I press on. I press on. Not getting historical, not looking to the past. Even the very best things, I press on. To know Christ. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Pressing on. Pressing on to knowing Christ with personal faith. Verse 10. This is what Paul says. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. It's a personal faith. It's not just, I want to know Christ's example and follow a good example. No, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. He's not talking about, I just want to know the the moral ethic that Christ taught. No, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. That through his resurrection, Jesus Christ is in the here and now. And he talks about him in the present, not in the past. He's not following an example. He's following a personal faith, a personal relationship, knowing Christ. James Moore tells a story about a time when he was invited to give the invocation at a rodeo. He said he was backstage waiting to be called on for the prayer. And there were a couple of cowboys back there. And they were both bull riders. And they were talking about the different things that the bulls had done to them. They were talking about sprained back, times bulls had stepped on them. (laughs) They were talking about all the times they'd been thrown from from the bull. And what the bulls had done to him and given him broken ribs. And and that's when he said a, a... Somebody dressed with new cowboy boots, new fresh pressed Levi's cowboy shirt and a a brand new white hat walked past and the two cowboys quit talking and and they saw the fellow go by who had obviously never been close to a horse before and they nodded to him, said hello and then when he got past, one of the cowboys said, all hat and no cattle. 
<laughs> well, maybe you've heard that expression before, all hat and no cattle. Or maybe it was all icing and no cake or all sizzle and no steak. Well, it's all the same saying. It's, it's all fluff and no substance. There's no, there's no, no power there. Paul, he talks about the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, that he follows Christ. And he says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. To know Christ is to know the power that Jesus Christ gives in the here and now that's bigger than our circumstances, to know joy and to know peace. And when Paul talks about this, he's not sitting in a field of clover just spinning theology and, and writing some really nice words. He's sitting in jail. He's in prison. And it's Paul who speaks beyond his circumstances to encourage the church, those who are free. Life is hard. Jesus knows that life is hard. Jesus knows what it is to suffer. And to know Jesus isn't just to follow a good example. To know Jesus is to know that on the cross what he did with all those things that would destroy us is he nailed them to the cross. He took away their power. And to know the power of his resurrection is to know that the, the same power that, that overcame all those things that would destroy us is now available in His Holy Spirit to live through, through you and me. And the power of His resurrection gives us power in the here and now. The power of peace. The power of joy that's stronger than our circumstances. And we can trust Him. That would, that's what faith is. We can trust Him. We can lean on Him. We can rely on that power in the here and now, today, Paul says, press on, press on. And that's a pressing on in personal faith. And the second thing Paul calls us to is, is pressing on and remembering who we are. Remember who you are. Verse 12, B, this is what Paul says. He says, I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Christ Jesus has made me his own. That's who God says you are, is you're his own possession. Again and again in the Bible, it says that we belong to him. We're connected to him. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches that were made to be connected to him. And a, a, a part separated from the vine there's no such thing as a branch. It withers and it dies. That we're made to be connected. We are his own. That's who we are. That's our identity in Jesus Christ. We are his own. He is the vine. We are the branches. We're made to be connected to him. Years ago, I received a phone call in the middle of the night. The voice on the other end asked me, it was my credit card company, asked me not for me to state my name, but asked me, is this my name? And then he stated, the person on the other end, he stated my name. And then he went on to say, is this your credit card number? And he read off my credit card number. He didn't ask me to, to give my credit card number. And then he asked me a very pertinent question. He said, are you in Bulgaria? at a women's lingerie shop making a large purchase. <laughs> I said, no, I'm in Georgia and I'm asleep. He said, that's what I expect, suspected. And he says, we won't approve the charges. And then he hung up. Well, <laughs> someone was trying to compromise my identity. They were trying to take on my identity, except they were in Bulgaria. We live in a, in a, in a, in a time, in a culture where our identity is always trying to be compromised. And if somebody compromises your identity, you'd at least think they'd make a house payment, but that's not what he was trying to do. He was trying to compromise it for the worse. Trying to take something in my identity and call it his own. You and I, 
we have an, an identity in Christ and it is our primary identity. And this world is trying to compromise that identity and, 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 and make it something less. And anything less than being his own is something less. And most often, our identity is, is, is being tried to compromise, not a, a choice between good and bad. It's a choice between good and being God's own. That the way that C.S. Lewis put it, he says, every human love has a tendency to claim for itself divine authority. That the choice isn't between good and bad, that the choice is between good and, and God. Pastor Don Tuttle tells a story about a, a play that he read. And the main character in the play is a fellow named Sam. Sam bumps into Jesus on the sidewalk and Jesus says, are you willing to take up my cross and follow me? Sam says, yes. Well, Jesus gives him his cross, but it's not a little cross that he can put in his pocket or a little cross he can put on a chain and put under his shirt. It's a full-size cross. Well, this full-size cross has a tendency in the play to, to get in Sam's way everywhere he goes. As a matter of fact, at work, he, he, he loves his job. But it, the cross gets in the way. His boss comes to him and says, Sam, you used to be willing to compromise the truth in order to benefit the company. That you used to be willing to compromise the truth to the customers in order to benefit the company. And now you're not willing to do that anymore. The cross is getting in the way. Next scene, Sam is with his girlfriend, and his girlfriend says, why can't you just be like everybody else? This, this, the cross is getting in the way. In the next scene, Sam is with his friends, and he loves his friends, and he enjoyed being around his friends, but his friends, they take enjoyment by waiting till other people aren't around and criticizing others. And belittling others behind their back. And the cross gets in the way. Every human love has a tendency to claim for itself divine authority. And the compromise isn't between good and bad. Or good and evil. It's a it's compromise between good and, and God. Being God's own. And our primary authority being in Him. C.S. Lewis talks about that. When he, he says that. During World War II, it was a love of country that compromised the identity. That love of country is a, is a good thing. It's a very good thing. But World War II Germany was pressed to love the motherland above all others, and it became a cause for war. But C.S. Lewis doesn't stop there. He, he goes on to say, even the love of a parent... The parents say, well, we love our children so much that we spoil them to death. And even to the detriment of our children, we, we claim our identity as a, as a parent, which is a, a wonderful thing, a good thing. But when we claim it as an identity to have more authority than, than love of God, then it destroys our children. And that we hear nowadays, you know, love is love. Well, every human love has a tendency to claim for itself, define authority. And to claim even romantic love as being our primary identity. That the object of our love, we're willing to destroy the people around us. To, just, to, to, fall, to fall into a love that's, even, that's bad for us, a bad for others, bad for everyone around us, and claim for ourselves in this love, divine authority. Jesus didn't need to die on the cross, so we just love in a human love that we already love anyway. That our primary identity as, as his own, as God's own, as God's own possession is an identity that calls us to more than anything that, that we can 
can do on our own. That the demons in our lives don't come from, from fallen rats and fleas and whatever's bad and whatever's worse. That the real demons in our lives come from fallen angels. It's whatever's highest, it's whatever's best that takes the place of God and being God's own. It's whatever takes our identity from, from being his own possession of being the branches that must be connected to him. And so Paul is saying, press on, press on in this, this relationship with Jesus Christ that we remember who we are, that we, our identity is we are his own, his own possession. But not only remember who you are, he goes on to say, forget who you're not. In verse 13b, this is what Paul says. He says, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, that we press on to what lies ahead. We forget what lies behind, to press on to what lies ahead. And we forget who we're not. When Paul is, is naming off all those things in his trophy case, most all of those things are, are achievements, resume, good things. That he's a Hebrew of Hebrews, born of the tribe of, of Benjamin, that he's a Pharisee of Pharisees, that he's blameless. But he includes one more thing in that. He says, a persecutor of the church. Well, Paul didn't just persecute the church with harsh language. That he persecuted the church with imprisonment, with beatings, with even murder. Paul was an accessory to murder in the stoning of Stephen. That it's, that it's not only best, but that that's worse. That he forgets. That he leaves it behind. That he no longer practices and rehearses the best. He no longer practices and rehearses the worst that he presses on, that he leans forward. There's a story about Robert E. Lee at the end of the Civil War that he spent a, his life riding through the southern states to try and heal broken people. There's a story about a conversation he had with a woman who'd become a widow during the, the Civil War. And she held such bitterness against the union that she, she would rehearse that bitterness again and again and again. And she turned to Robert E. Lee and she pointed to a grove of trees and she said, See, the, the union troops, they, they camped down there in that grove of trees. And they used those trees as target practice. They carved their names into the trees. What do I do about that? And Robert E. Lee said, Cut them down and move on. Cut them down and move on. The things that destroy us. Sometimes those are those things that we've done. And sometimes they're those things that have been done to us. And to practice them and to rehearse them. To get historical about them is to give them power. Power that they don't have. That on the cross Jesus took all those things that would destroy us. He nailed them to the cross to take away their power once and for all. And when he rose from the grave... That through his Holy Spirit, he gave the power to you and to me. Power over those things that would destroy us. Some of those things are things that we've done. And some of those things are things that we've done, have been done to us. The, that power, it's gone. And we can invite the risen Christ to live his life, to give us strength to press on to press on. This morning it may be that um, you've gotten historical. You've been rehearsing and practicing things that, that are destroying you. And you know it. Nobody needs to tell you. And you need the holy power of forgetfulness. It's a power that Jesus gives. The power to forget what lies behind and to press on in a personal relationship with Him. Not just 
following his example, but following him as Lord, as the leader of your life. And maybe you started that way years ago, but in recent times, you've let your identity be compromised. And that you, it's not that you've been following bad things. You've been following good things as your primary identity. But you've not been following Christ. The one that on the cross defeated all the things that would destroy you. That you've not been following Christ as, as his own possession. Well, I want to pray with you this morning. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, this day, may it be a new day, a new creation, a fresh start, a new beginning. Well, right now, we turn over to you, the past. A past that we've been trying to rehearse and live over again. It may have been a good past, but it's not the same as following you. Lord, it may have been a a past of, of defeat and betrayal. And what we've created is a bitterness, separated us from you and from other people. Jesus, this morning, breathe new life, new life into us in the here and the now. That we follow you, heart, soul, mind, strength. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.